There's a famous story of a man who forgot his anniversary. So he goes to his rabbi and goes, Rabbi, I don't know what I did wrong. And the rabbi goes, listen, go out to the store, buy the biggest bouquet of flowers you can afford, and go bring it to your wife. He goes out to the store, buys this huge bouquet of flowers. He knocks on his door. His wife opens the door and goes, oh, and he goes, here, the rabbi told me to buy these for you. What is the core of a relationship? And that is one thing and one thing only, communication. What you do pales into comparison to what you say. But what is communication? Sometimes you see this with a husband and a wife. She may say, you don't tell me enough that you love me. And he may say, my whole life is for you. I work every second for you. Because the essence of communication is not what you say in the way you speak. The essence of communication is the humility to speak in the way that they hear it. Now, if this is true between man and man, which it is, this is absolutely true with us between us and God. What do I mean? If Forbes was coming out with the top 100 most powerful Jews ever, I'm talking about money, power, influence, who would be number one on that list? Isn't it Joseph? The ultimate success story, the rags to riches. What was the secret of his success? Let's go back. The brothers were putting Joseph in a pit, not knowing what to do with him. They're eating their meal. They look up and they see in a caravan of Arab merchants, and they were carrying on this caravan spices, all these sweet smelling spices. And they say, why don't we sell him to Egypt? And all the commentators say, wait a second, why in the world do we care what's on the caravans? And the answer that the Rashi gives is, in those days, the Arab merchants were known for trading in very terrible smelling substances. But because Joseph was righteous, God made a miracle and had Arab merchants on that day carrying sweet smelling spices. Anyone see a problem with this? You want to pull a miracle, God? I don't know. Why don't you have the caravan break down and send them home? So what really happened? Joseph's on the way down, but be Joseph for a moment. One day your father wakes up, and then all you know is your father sends you to a town, your brothers pick you up, and sell you. So Joseph thinks, arguably, his father sold him out. Joseph's on the way down to Egypt, and he is alone. No mom, no dad, no brothers, no God, nothing. And he starts to descend and descend into that place of hopelessness and loneliness. And all of a sudden, something happens on the carrier. Wait a second. These are Arab merchants, and they always carry petroleum and tar. Why are there spices? God never told Joseph, go down, I'll be with you. All God did was take a small nuance and shifted it a drop. But Joseph, the king of success, understood that communication is not the way I like to hear it. It's the way you say it. And what made Joseph so successful was that he had the humility to hear the way God speaks, not the way we speak. And he held on and he held on. And like everyone else in life that holds on, at some point you look back and go, I get it. We think that God doesn't talk to us. You know why? Because he's not speaking to us in English. And we're sitting around waiting every day. Come on. Want me to believe in you? Talk my language. Poof me miracles. And every second of every day, every one of us in this room, God speaks to you all day long. But we never have the humility to see it. Because we're waiting for it to be in our language. And God goes, I'm talking to you. In every spice and every move, I'm talking to you.